This is a video about gravity and asteroids. And notice this says gravity actually raises a lot of questions in astronomy. That is absolutely 100% true. We as as human beings like like no scientists really understand like why gravity works the way it does. Like there's some really promising theories but they're super weird. Um and if you want to learn more about those do a Google search for like astronomy gravity and just like watch some of the stuff that comes up. Um, it's fascinating, but that's not really what we're going to be talking about here. Um, we're going to be focused on doing calculations and in particular, um, we're going to be paying attention to this. These calculations will use scientific notation where the exponent of the number matters more than the digits. Basically, like the exponent of the number is the difference between 10 and 100. 10 is way, way, way different from 100. So the difference between like 10 and 35 is not nearly as important as the difference between 10 or 100 or 1,000. That's what the exponent of the number means. So we're paying special attention to that here. Um, and we did this example in class. Um, I'm not going to do this example here because we did it in class, but this is the basic idea of what we're trying to do. Use numbers from this, this table, think about what they might mean, and use them to make calculations. Um, so if you're working from the power, uh, sorry, from the pair deck that we did in class, it may look like this. Unfortunately, I like made some changes. I, I, this was just like kind of confusing, so I changed it around a little bit. I'm going to be doing um, question C first right now. So this would be first. And I'm going to be doing question B second. But know that they are switched. If, you're, if, you're, um, if your pair deck doesn't have like the picture of the person standing on the earth that this one has, know that it's going to be flipped. So please pay attention to that. Um, I'm going to skip this one because it's, a, it's so similar to the other one. I want to focus on some things that are a little bit weirder. So this says the International Space Station is in orbit at a distance of 6.9 times 10 to the 6 meters from the Earth's center. So if the teacher is on the space station, what is the force between the teacher and the Earth? We need to use this equation up here to make our calculations. So let's try doing that. Um, I like to use the text tool in Pear Deck, by the way, for these calculations. It's just so much faster than having to write everything out. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by substituting for G, 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11. And then I'm going to figure out what are the two masses that are being attracted here. Well, one of them is the Earth and one of them is the teacher. So the mass of the teacher is 1 e2, 1 e, sorry, e2, and the mass of the earth is 6.0 times e24, 6.0 times 10 to the 24. So I'm, I'm multiplying these things together um, on the top of the fraction, and then I'm going to div divide them, I'll make this black, by the distance squared. So let's figure out what, what that would be. It says in the problem the distance between the, the person and the space station is 6.9 times 10 to the sixth. 6.9 e6. But notice I have to square that distance. So I'm going to put parentheses around it and square it. Um, remember, this is exactly the same as multiplying it by itself. So that's what I'm dealing with here. Um, now, it's worth mentioning you can earn almost full credit by working with only exponents. I'm going to show you how to work with only exponents so that you know how to deal with that. And then I'm going to show you how to figure out the numbers too, because it's not actually that much more difficult. But know that like the first step of what I'm about to do is the most important step, and you can get a lot of credit for just doing this one part. So here's what this means. Wow, that, that dot is so annoying. Okay, here we go. 
Um, we can figure out approximately how big or how small this number is by just dealing with the E numbers. So I'm going to simplify this um, as my first step. E negative 11 times E2 times E24 um, divided by, oopsie, divided by E6 times E6. Um, so no, notice what we're, what we're saying here, like this 6.9 times 10 to the 6, that's the same as 6.9 times 10 to the 6 squared. So I'm showing that by just multiplying it together on the bottom of the fraction here. Um, and remember, we're trying to do this only exponents part first, and then we'll see what to do with that afterwards. So um, now I'm just going to multiply these exponents together, but this is really, really important. Whenever you're multiplying exponents, you are actually going to add them. So multiplying, multiplying means adding exponents. So anything that you're that you see with an e or times 10 to the means that you can when you're multiplying you add the numbers together and when you're dividing you subtract. I'll write that too. Multiplying means um, adding exponents, dividing means subtract exponents. Um, okay, so let's see what this means. E, e, e to the negative 11 times E2 times E24. Um, I am going to add these numbers together. Negative 11 plus 2 plus 24. It's multiplying actually because they're exponents, but that's how I'm dealing with my exponents as I'm as I'm adding them to figure out the answer. Okay, then I need to subtract these two because they're being divided. So minus six minus six equals e three. Cool. So whatever my answer is, it is approximately e three which is the same as a one with three zeros. So that's basically the same as 1,000, approximately. Now, in order to do the next step of this, in order to get the 100% correct answer, I then have to go through and do the same thing with the numbers and then attach it to this answer. So let's see what that looks like as well. Again, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what am I going to put in front of this E3. Notice each of these has two parts to it. I figured out the E3 part, but I got to figure out the other part also. So I'm just going to take my calculator and go 6.7. Again, I'm ignoring the 11 because I did that already. 6.7 times 1 times 6, basically everything on the top divided by 6.9 divided by 6.9 again. Um, and I that's I just like divided twice instead of trying to figure out what was in the parentheses and all this stuff. That's the way I like to do it. But basically, you've got these numbers. You're multiplying and dividing and figuring out what they are. Remember, I wasn't adding them because these are not exponents. I only get to add and subtract when I'm dealing with exponents. So then I get 0 0.84, 0 0.844. I'm gonna I'm gonna abbreviate this as 0.84. So my answer is 0.84 e3. Let's figure out what that actually is. If I write this 0 0.84. Now I know that the e3 means add three zeros, or more importantly move the decimal place three places over. So I'm sure that you've seen teachers do this, like one, two, three. Like we're moving the decimal place three places over to make the number 
three places bigger. So what does that actually become? It becomes 840, and in this case, it's Newtons. Let me erase this little wiggly line. It's a little weird, but 0.84 E3, or 0.84 times 10 to the third, is the same as 840 Newtons. So this is your final answer here. E3 is a pretty good answer. We know it's about 1,000, but um, 840 or 0.84 times E3, that's an even better answer. Let's try this next one. Um, calculate the force between the teacher and the earth. Again, okay, so we're doing the exact same thing, but some numbers have changed. So let's figure out what numbers have changed. Assume that the teacher is standing on Earth, so the distance between objects is equal to the Earth's radius. Okay, that's interesting. So if we go back to this picture, we can tell if we're making a calculation, the radius we use is actually the distance between the center of the objects. So for the sun and the teacher, or the sun and the Earth, it would be like the center of the sun to the center of the Earth, or your giant, giant teacher or your like, regular size teacher. Um, but in this case, the teacher is standing on the Earth, so the distance between two objects, between these two objects, is equal to the Earth's radius. Okay, so the distance from the center to the outside of the Earth is basically how far apart these objects are, center to center. Um, let's do our calculation. Force equals 6.67 e negative 11 times okay so mass of the teacher is the same mass of the teacher is 1 e 2 so 1 e 2 times mass of the earth still also the same 6 e 24 and then well, what's changed? Well, the distance between them has definitely changed. We have to use the radius of the Earth this time. So let's try that. Um, Earth size, 6.4 E6. Well, weirdly, that doesn't seem all that different from... Uh, the distance to the International Space Station. Like, that's, that's kind of crazy, actually, that the space station is 6.9 million meters from the Earth's center, and a person standing on the center, I'm sorry, standing on the surface, is 6.4 million distance like those aren't those numbers aren't that different actually what we're what we're seeing here which is true actually is the space station is like out here uh, I'm, I'm gonna draw a little tie fighter because i don't know how to draw a station space station but actually the distance between the earth center and the space station is not that much more it's still like about six or seven million meters up so we expect to see, yeah, this number is going to be a little bit bigger, but not that much bigger. Um, so let's give it a let's give it a try. Let's do the calculation. Let's finish it up. Um, this time, I just wanted to show you an e a slightly easier way to do the calculation because if you understand what you're doing, you can use Google actually, and you can just type in six point six seven. E negative 11 times, I just typed shift 8 to get times, 1 E 2 times 6 E 4, or sorry, 6 E 24, divided by 6.4 E 6, and this is maybe where I use my parentheses, squared. So, Google is actually a pretty awesome calculator because you can just type this into your search bar and it'll tell you the answer is 977. So let's just go ahead and write that down. 977 newtons. So this is exactly like we thought actually. The, the, um, 
the force, the attraction between the earth and the person is a little bit more when they're standing on the surface of the earth, but not that much more than when the, than if they're hanging out in the International Space Station. Um, and I'll show you two things about this, in case you're curious. Um, uh, gra oh, here we go. Gravity and orbits. So one thing is, if we look at a two-scale model of a satellite, look at how close it is to the Earth. I know we don't usually think of it as being close, but actually the atmosphere of the Earth is pretty skinny. So this is saying, look at that. The satellite is actually not very much farther than the surface of the Earth. This is fascinating. Another thing that you can um, you can do to, to learn more about why this is, is watch some of the videos, videos actually. Um, this guy starts by talking about like, oh my God. Get out of my face, kids. I'm trying to learn. Um, so he talks about like, imagine you shoot a cannonball and you shoot the cannonball further and further and further. And eventually you shoot the cannonball so far that when it falls around the earth, it like falls in a giant circle, which is actually a good way to think about an orbit. And Isaac Newton, this dude, this guy, um, was the first to like really think that through and like develop the mathematics of like what that looks like. So this equation um, is generally referred to as Newtonian gravity. All right. Thanks, guys.